to our fifth episode of The Bar is Ankle High. Uh, also, happy birthday to PK, because this comes out on his birthday. Oh yeah, happy birthday. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> if you listened last week, uh, you know that we had a little bit of a sidebar about the Pillsbury Doughboy dying. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I... This is... This is what I refused to Google because it involved Pillsbury Doughboy yeast and prodding. And I was just not, not into that. Yeah. Katie, on the other hand, was glad to look it up. (laughs) Sure did. So I'll read you this little thing. And now keep in mind that uh, there are certain words... That are homophone, homophones. Homonyms? <laughs> it's definitely homophones. <laughs> My cousin Kelly's a librarian and getting her doctorate in education. She's mad at you right now? Yeah, she's going to listen to this and be like, I Jesus swear to Christ, Katie. Christ, how are you a doctor? <laughs> I'm a doctor of words, but not, not like a grammatical doctor yeah, of I'm words. Yeah, I'm a doctor of law words. Anyway. Uh... That's why I like saying shant. <laughs> Hoomst. <laughs> Hoomst. I forgot about that. Please join me in remembering a great icon of the entertainment community. The Pillsbury Doughboy died yesterday of a yeast infection and trauma complications from repeated pokes in the belly. He was 71. Doughboy was buried in a lightly greased coffin. <laughs> Dozens of celebrities turned out to pay their respects, including Mrs. Butterworth, Hungry Jack, the California Raisins, Betty Crocker, the Hostess Twinkies, and Captain Crunch. The gravesite was piled high with flowers. F L O U R S. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> Aunt Jemima delivered the eulogy, lovingly described Doughboy as a man who never knew how much he was kneaded. Kneaded. <laughs> I like that you pronounce that that way as though... Just to make it clear for the listener. Just to make it clear. <laughs> uh, Doughboy rose quickly in show business, but his later life was filled with turnovers. He was not considered a very smart cookie, wasting much of his dough on half-baked schemes. Despite being a little flaky at times... <laughs> He was a crusty old man and was considered a positive role model for millions. <laughs> oh, role. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Doughboy is survived by his wife, Play-Doh, three children, John Doe, Jane Doe, and Dosi Doe. <laughs> Plus, they had one in the oven. He's also survived by his elderly father, Pop-Tart. <laughs> <laughs> the funeral was held at 3.50 for about 20 minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> if this made you smile for even a brief second, please rise to the occasion and take time to pass it on. Share that smile with somebody else who may be having a crummy day and can needs a lift. Oh, <laughs> they went all in. All in. They were like, this is the last sentence. We really need to load it full of baking puns. Yeah. But that time for crummy they and needs, they actually put quotes around it rather than all the other times. I had to really emphasize. <laughs> Do you know how hard it was for me to pronounce that K? Uh, also discussed last episode was um, my fascination with <laughs> concrete mixing transport trucks, apparently is the correct uh, way to describe them. Oh. And Katie was convinced that it was connected to the axles <laughs> driving the car which is not accurate. Uh, Inside the large drum is a big coil, like an auger. You know, those big, like, um, I'm trying to think, like a spiral. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And that spiral is mixing the contents in a way that it's cycling things from the top to the bottom Mm -hmm. so that it's fully mixing it. But then also... The shape and direction of the blades feed it up so that it feeds out of the the 
that? slide that <laughs> that comes with slide. You know the concrete slide. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, it perfectly spins so that it completely mixes and circulates what's in there and perfectly feeds it out of the slide. And but how is that powered? That's a good question, Katie. <laughs> Since you shit on my axle idea. <laughs> well, plus you and plus you have the. So this looks based on the drawing that it's like. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> the axles are necessary to distribute the load evenly. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm gonna have to do some more mix, some more mixing, some more, <laughs> some more reading on concrete mixers. So we'll keep you posted. <laughs> to be continued, as I learn more about this is gonna become a construction podcast. This is now a construction podcast. I'm going to be covering excavators, concrete mixers, <laughs> scissor lifts, garbage trucks. Um, you do drive a garbage truck. I so. do drive a garbage According truck. To... Yes. Toddlers, we know. Yeah, toddlers, you know. Anyway, <laughs> I am a uh, scissor lift operator part time. <laughs> what are we talking about today, Katie? Today we're talking about <laughs> impulsiveness and weird follow through. <laughs> That's odd. Huh. Yeah, I thought you know this has no correlation to my life at all. Uh, she said with sarcasm, <laughs> kind of like Mila uh, last episode feeling attacked by the emotional dysregulation coverage and then realizing that that's emotional dysregulation. <laughs> Turns out. Turns out I'm the problem. <laughs> so I actually did a hell of a deep dive. On this oh, I'm really excited. <laughs> okay. So in general, um, impulsivity is broadly defined as action without foresight. And the consensus among the scientific community is that impulsivity is central to ADHD. <clears throat> Additionally, researchers have found an increase in comorbid disorders such as anxiety, depression, dyslexia, and other similar diagnoses that have a corresponding increase in impulsivity in those in ADHD. So if you have a comorbid condition, you're going to have more impulsivity issues with your ADHD. Gotcha. So some examples of impulsivity, like IRL, uh, include interrupting others. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Never done it in my life. <laughs> distractions for your distractions, like <laughs> Garrett's face. <laughs> Again, so you no thought familiarity. You were attacked last time. <laughs> Every episode of this, I'm like, oh, I guess. Mm, yep, I do that. Yeah. So basically, like, if you were to go into a meeting with a notepad so that you can like doodle on it and distract yourself, but then you also have like a ring that you twirl on your finger or something with your pen that you can fiddle with or something else. <laughs> definitely not twirling your hair. That definitely would not be a. I leave work at the end of the day sometimes and I look like Shirley Temple because I've just been sitting, thinking, and twirling my hair all day. I That is one of the reasons that my hair frequently ends up in a ponytail, yep. regardless of how I style it for work, because I need it out of my face and I need both my hands to do my job. <laughs> yes. If I'm thinking, I'm sitting there twirling, playing with my hair, and I've done it since I was a kid. I used to do it all the time. Actually, that was one of the things that my abusive ex, like, would scream at me about because it's, he said it made me look stupid. Like, I looked like a valley girl if I did it. I'm like, actually, being with you makes me look stupid. Yeah. Not twirling my hair. <laughs> um, but, yeah, when I read that, that yeah. twirling your hair is, like, a stimming thing, yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> I totally, yes. That is, like, I actually remember being in, like, third grade and my teacher yelling at me for playing with my hair. Yeah, twirling your hair, I don't see how it's an issue beyond, like, if you were to, like, pull it up like alfalfa and, like, twirl it in the middle of class, that would be distracting. But mm -hmm. if I'm just twirling it next just to my chin... Just playing with it. Yeah. yeah. Just playing with my hair. Um, so, yeah, distractions of distractions, I may or may not be... I also that. sucked my thumb until I was about eight. Oh, I was never a thumb sucker. So I think that that was also That's part of one. my, like, 
self-soothing mm-hmm. thing that I did mm-hmm. that also kept me from being diagnosed because I would just suck my thumb and chill out. <laughs> oh, I'm good now. <laughs> yep, I'm good now. <laughs> I still find myself waking because I would suck my thumb and like put my hand back. So I was almost like holding my jawbone Mm -hmm. or I'd have my index finger like against my nose Mm -hmm. and I'll wake up still with my hand on my face. Oh, (laughs) that's cute. (laughs) And sometimes I wake up and I can feel like a line on my inside cheek. So I know that in my sleep I was like suckling. So like I was like pulling my cheek through my teeth. I hope that we have somebody that's keeping track of strange words that we use because we're going to need you to add to that list suckling. I did not (laughs) think that word was going to make it onto this podcast. And here we are. Katie said the word suckling in earnest. She meant it. I did, yeah. I did, yeah. I was suckling. What's the problem? Anyway, (laughs) distractions for your distractions. (laughs) Suckling for your suckling. Yeah. Um, Excessive spending. uh, Mm. ADHD folks or people who with impulsivity issues um, kind of just spend like crazy. And if you Mm -hmm. ask my mother, I absolutely have this problem. Um, I I would say that I can, but all of my bills are always paid. It's really like that extra money where I can be like, oh, sure. Yeah, like I I think when I do get like impulsive and spend a little bit, like maybe I find a sale and spend like a hundred. $150. $150. Oh, I can go more than that. But, but I usually won't. Like, I usually very... won't exceed, like, $200 is usually, like, my cap. Yeah, I would say maybe, like, maybe twice a year I really go, like, mm-hmm. nuts. But there's some sort of sale situation. Right. Or, like... A seasonal thing. In or... April, I got that new coat and mm-hmm. my slippers. Mm-hmm. Which, okay. <laughs> right. Like a winter coat and some slippers. Yeah. <laughs> Treat yourself. <laughs> yeah. They're like this wild ADHD spending. And we're like, I got, I got this these one. new socks. <laughs> yeah. For example, I got one of a carton of that Newman's own lemonade the other day at mm-hmm. the grocery store. And I was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to treat myself. Is it good? Lemonade is so good. Especially in this heat. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is so nice. It's like super cold with like some ice. Oh, so I feel good. like that would be good with seltzer too. You threw some seltzer in there. For sure. And so I've also been on a, cocktails. <laughs> a big Luigi's ice kick. Oh, so good. So good. Um, and then another example of impulsivity is difficult to resist risky self-destructive behavior. The um, example I saw in this was like, prone to having unprotected sex with oh, yeah. various partners or like having somebody saved in your phone as do not answer or like don't text while drunk or something like that. Like that's yeah. their contact name. Right, right, than, right. Um, anything like that, which I don't know that I have anybody. I'll, I'll put like something next to them. Like if it's that sort of thing where it's like you're out and a guy like asked for your number and it's that thing where it's like, you can't really say no, or they like check to make Mm -hmm. sure they got your number, like that bullshit. Right. Then I save them. That's a good start. Yeah. I save them as like their first name, the place we met and then weird. (laughs) I would love to see, uh, Katie's nomenclature in her phone. It's probably like that Michael Scott thing where he was like, green means go ahead and shut up about it. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Katie, what does this mean? Oh, yeah, I used to have this code. (laughs) It's really helpful when you're single. He was really into suckling, and that just, like, was not my thing. So (laughs) that's why he's named Jerry Suckler. Mm. Long story short. Yeah. Uh, Saves time. (laughs) Shorthand. (laughs) And then the other thing, which surprised me that it was impulsivity-related, but... Uh, the thought of waiting in line for long periods of time makes you want to crawl out of your skin. <laughs> Garrett just passed away. <laughs> Can I just really quick tell you, when I was coming home last night, I they're doing road work, and it was like right before the turn for my road, mm. and sat in traffic for like, it was over five minutes of letting the other side go. Yeah. And it's like one car, and then nothing. And then a couple of cars and then nothing. So, like, meanwhile, traffic is backed up, like, half a mile. And you're you're just letting this one side go. And I finally beeped. I was so mad. I was like, I understand that we're stuck. But I'm, like, 30 feet from my road. So I'm stuck <laughs> in this traffic. 
I can practically see my house from where I am. I'm dying. Um, so anyway, yeah, continue. So evidently that's in Chesapeake. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, Lord. So anyway, <laughs> if you answered yes to any of those experiences. <laughs> or if you just crawled out of your skin instead of answering yes, which is what I did. So I found a 2006 Cambridge study published in the Clinical Psychological Review titled Behavioral Models of Impulsivity and ADHD, and that study divided impulsivity into two categories. The first is impulsive choice or impulsive decision making, or and the second one was uh, impulsive action or mo- motoric, mot- mot- motoric, whatever, movement <laughs> impulsivity. <laughs> And that study actually also broadly defined impulsivity. So before we said it was action without foresight, this study defined it as the inability to withhold from making a response, which I think was probably more inclusive for the different types of ADHD. Yeah. Um, So this paper went over a couple different studies. So the initial study that it did was um, conducted on rats and humans. And uh, for the purposes of this discussion on this podcast, let's just assume I'm always talking about rats because these articles used a lot of acronyms and then there was no reminder later on in the article what the fucking acronym was. As though someone with ADHD who has a bad working memory is not the one reading it. Or who isn't in, like, neuroscience as a career, like... So anyway, in the future, if somehow somebody who does these studies is listening to this podcast, if you're going to publish this online, just have like a floating box next to it or link those terms every time so that I can just hover Hover, over it and get a little pop-up window that tells me what the full version of that phrase is. Like Kindle X-ray. Yes. This would be helpful. Yes. In every part of my life all the time. Exactly. So anyway... Side note on that, but it was, I was just like, I can't keep track of the different types of people and the whatever. They mm-hmm. they also like would be like, oh yeah, serotonin. And then we'd be like, HC2LK. And I was like, how is that serotonin? <laughs> that would have been when I started scrolling on, oh no. <laughs> no. So when that, that happens to me, I just, it's like a speed bump. I just read over it. <laughs> So then I start skimming. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the study on rats, um, the rats were presented with two levers. One, when pushed, instantly released a single unit of food, so like a single thing of kibble. But the other lever <laughs> would release way more food, a.k.a. reward. Right. But there was a delay mm-hmm. um, in when the food would be released. And each time they pressed the lever, the delay would increase up to 100 seconds between pushing the lever and receiving the reward. And the food reward would increase with the amount of time that passed as well. Okay. I mean, obviously the rats weren't told. They just have to wait 90, Mm -hmm. like a minute and a half to get like a smorgasbord. But despite the reward increasing with each time that the wait time increased, uh, the study found that there's there is a point in time where the smaller instant reward will always be chosen over the larger reward. Mm. Um, They also found in a different study within the same paper, um, they were studying reaction times. And it wasn't to say that a reaction was slow, but rather there was a delay in adjusting your reaction to stimulus. So in this study, which they called the go-no-go study, they did on humans... Mm-hmm. because the humans were told, okay, when you see a green dot on the screen, press the button. And they measured the time between the green dot being on the screen and how long it took them to press the button. Okay. So they did that, and then they said, if you see a red dot on the screen, don't press the button. And they changed, either they would show the <clears throat> red image would appear immediately before the green image or immediately after the green image. And um, the researchers would adjust the time in between each of those images, whatever. 
but um, they found that folks with impulsivity issues, like with ADHD, that they were more likely to just press green as soon as they saw green and not process that they saw the red. (laughs) (laughs) And they thought that the delay in adjusting your action time could be indicative of a processing speed impairment rather than an inhibition deficit, Mm -hmm. Um, which the researchers said corresponded to um, the increased severity of ADHD symptoms in those with comorbid mental health issues and learning disabilities. Okay. Um, Which it seems to be in a lot of the ADHD research, they do have a hard time with the variables of comorbidities where there's other mental health issues at play and medicated versus unmedicated. Seems to like really Mm -hmm. throw a wrench in ADHD researching that they're doing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, so much of any medication that you're on is really about finding the right dose Mm -hmm. for you and for what you need it for. Like at that time, which can vary too. And, you know, there's like for my job, I have to be able to sit still and focus and meet deadlines every day. But if I was in nursing, for example, I may Mm -hmm. not really find that I need medication all that much. Because I was always doing something. I'm on my feet. On the cuff. like Right. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I think that that also lends itself to why it's a lot easier to study these patterns in lab animals Mm -hmm. rather than humans. Because, again, also humans can tell, like we discussed last week, like, like if you tell me I have to follow the rules, I can follow the rules for eight weeks. Like, I know I'm a part of a study. I'll do what I'm supposed to do. Right. Which is this, I mean, that also goes to, like any pharmaceutical thing about like weight loss when they're like people lost this much more weight or this and it's like (laughs) yeah i can lose weight for eight weeks as i guarantee i'm going to (laughs) i only ate grapefruit and rice cakes yeah i'm gonna run a train on some pizza hut (laughs) (laughs) as soon as this study's over (laughs) katie loves running a train man i love a good train (laughs) a train period (laughs) running one gravies filling one with gravy it really you know any of those. Maybe that's the issue, is that I just love trains. <laughs> and as we were talking about the overlap between ADHD and autism, Katie is going to tell us about her love of trains in different forms. Listen. Metaphorical trains, literal trains. Thomas the Tank Engine gets it. <laughs> How creepy of a face on a train, by the way, anyway. <laughs> so yes, I'm sorry. The study about with the rats. Uh, Yeah. So then there was another study um, in that same article that identified two subtypes of ADHD when evaluating impulsivity controls. Oh, okay. The first first one they called altered motivational style pathway ADHD, which they said was MSP ADHD. Um, They defined as having a strong aversion to experiencing delays. (laughs) That's a nice way to put it. (laughs) And caused by alterations in function areas more fundamentally involved in reward processing in the brain. (laughs) Do you need me to repeat that? (laughs) Yeah, I do. (laughs) I got reward processing in the brain. Yeah, so there's um, there's different... You have a different brain structure that handles reward processing. Okay. Um, Kind of like a really strong amygdala. Yes, like physically your brain is different. Gotcha. Um, And the second type of uh, ADHD subtype they identified is called disordered thought and action pathway ADHD, which they call DTAP ADHD. And I'm pretty sure DTAP is like a a tuberculosis test. (laughs) Like the thing they put in your arm. (laughs) I don't want to split hair as a neurologist, but I mean. (laughs) I'm just saying, yeah. If you're going to research this and name things. (laughs) And they said that this is uh, indicated by a fundamental dysregulation of inhibitory function, which they posited or concluded, I'm not sure was caused by dysregulation or circuitry issues in the prefrontal cortex, which, which we talked about last totally, week. Yeah, totally tracks with last episode. <clears throat> um, so ultimately, 
there is a conclusion that the ADHD symptoms in general have been widely tied to a dysfunctional prefrontal cortex, with studies proving that those with ADHD have prefrontal cortexes that take longer to develop than usual, often taking well into adulthood to fully form as much as possible, whereas a normal prefrontal cortex finishes developing by late teens. Thus, issues with distractibility and attention dysfunction are also seen in subjects with prefrontal cortex damage and is seen as those and is seen with those who are recovering from traumatic brain injuries that have damaged their prefrontal cortex. I did read that. They were saying cuz they were talking about causes for a lot of these yeah. symptoms that we're talking about and it turns out like which offended isn't the word, but I was kind of taken aback that they're like, yes. well, it can either be something that, you know, there's this genetic component you're born with, you know, you always have, or you can have brain damage and either one of those right. will cause this list of symptoms. Exactly. Which was just very surprising to me to see it broken down like that. Like it's either this or you're brain damaged. And it's also, I guess, somewhat helpful in the sense that they could do studies on those who have had traumatic brain injuries, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit more easily than they can do on... I'll say uh, high functioning ADHD. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, those of us that live normal lives and Mm -hmm. go out there and don't have the delays that I think are typically associated with a TBI. Right. Um, So it's probably a little bit easier to measure that. And then you have, I mean, folks with TBIs have brain scans. So then you have all those scans. And and OT and PT. And yeah, they've got like a lot of different people troubleshooting a lot of the different issues that they're having. Right. And for somebody like, why would you and I go to occupational or physical therapy unless we had an injury? probably benefit from it. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm talking about all these troubles. how you use a calendar. (laughs) So when you make a to-do list... (laughs) You write the things you have to do. (laughs) But they also, the researchers in this study also said that ADHD symptoms are also possibly the result of coexisting subcortical structures within the basal ganglia. I don't know what that means. Whatever. Anyway. (laughs) Something else is. That's information for you, listener. Enjoy. (laughs) I just like saying basal ganglia, really. That's, like that's why I included that it. Amygdala is also fun to <laughs> Amygdala, say. Amygdala, yeah. Um, there's also something called the nucleus accumbens, which I've shortened to NAC. <laughs> Love that, yep. <laughs> um, that part of your brain receives information from the frontal cortex, which we've already discussed is uh, not necessarily fully developed. And it's been suggested that the NAC acts as a limbic motor interface, so damage to the NAC core markedly increases impulsive choice when measured by the delayed reward task that we discussed above. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just have here note, damage here is seen in the form of lesions on the brain's tissues and not necessarily the result of a traumatic event on the tissues. No way. Yeah. Um, So, (laughs) fun fact... (laughs) Turning to that chemical component of ADHD, um, the most common medications prescribed for the treatment of ADHD in children and adults are amphetamine or methylphenidate. Mm -hmm. Um, The serotonin system's role in regulating impulsivity can be heightened by those prescription medication treatments because amphetamines increase serotonin, dopamine, and noradrenaline which allows those who have defective dopamine and serotonin production, like those with ADHD, and defective receptors of those two things to produce enough of those chemicals to allow their brain to to absorb the chemicals in a way that a normal brain does, thereby bringing the brain down to normal functioning levels by speeding it up. Which is amazing. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, my therapist had talked about anxiety and ADHD both causing yeah. like your brain waves instead of having this long up and down like journey that they take are like faster. Right. It's like a shorter, faster brain wave pattern yes. that they see, which I mean, it's, it is nice to kind of have some of this neuroscience to validate some of these symptoms. You can see like, oh, there's a real reason why I'm feeling this or experiencing this or dealing with this. Yeah. 
And I feel like seeing the the visual of the brainwaves being super crazy mm-hmm. is very confirming in the sense that, like, oh, that's how my brain feels. Yep. <laughs> oh, it looks like that? Because that's exactly how it feels in there. Like that time I didn't take my meds one weekend because I was like, oh, I have nothing going on. It's gloomy out. I'm just going to stay home. And I was like, I can't handle this. I feel like I am made of bees. I yes, am like that's... vibrating. I yep. hate this so much. Yep. And I was like, how did I live like this for 33 years? Like, yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> um, so I said, okay, so what now? <laughs> Uh, so I say, well, in children, impulsivity usually presents as answering in class without raising your hand, which I for sure did. Um, Uh, yeah, we got in big, big time trouble for that. Uh, so I was usually too afraid to get in trouble. So, uh, yeah, I would just call out, especially if I was certain I knew the answer. Yeah. Um, you're like, these dummies don't get it. (laughs) I'm smart. (laughs) Emotional outbursts, interrupting or getting out of your assigned seat. Um, my brother definitely got out of his assigned seat all the time. My mom did too, but my mom got tied to her seat in kindergarten. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the 50s were weird. and <laughs> We're just a bunch of snowflakes. They were straight up abusing children in schools. <laughs> um, they just did verbal abuse when I was a kid. <laughs> they didn't tie us to things. They just beat us down mentally. <laughs> I had a teacher tell me I was, uh, when I started, and this is, I know this is like right when my symptoms started getting like really noticeable, told me I was slower than molasses in January. Oh, my mom says that to people all the time. Yeah, was my mom your is. teacher? <laughs> By the way, her name. <laughs> no, your mom was not my teacher. But I remember being seven and being like, oh, that was offensive. It's hurtful. God. <laughs> Um, in adults, though, impulsivity uh, presents often as spending money without concern or trouble managing money. Um, and adults often report getting distracted from their distractions. So working and then getting distracted and then continuing kind of like to go down different rabbit holes after rabbit holes after rabbit holes without getting back to that original task first. So like it's one thing to take a break, like a mental break from your assignment regroup and go back to it but and I know that I do this often where I'll take a break and that break can last 30 to 45 minutes it turns into Alice in Wonderland and suddenly you're in a tea party and you don't know how you right and often not like it's theoretically work related like I'm looking up case law but it's not Mm -hmm. case law that I'll need I'm just reading these cases that don't make any sense (laughs) for what I need for my job Katie's reading them for like the gossipy, crazy story that's happening. She's Literally. Like, Can you believe? <laughs> I, like, very often catch myself saying to my boss, oh, yeah, I was just reading a case that was about blah, 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 blah. That was crazy. <laughs> He's like, cool. <laughs> You're like... from 1921, you, but I guess... You're like, did you know there was a case in 1921 and you rattle it off? And he goes, why the fuck would I know that? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm the American girl. To- oh, okay, I see, okay, I see. Okay, yeah, I see. I see what happened. I should print that out and put it on my desk. Good, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, that was actually, uh, I put in here, <laughs> I like to think of this as the rabbit hole effect. I suffer from this constantly and is part of why I asked to be evaluated. <laughs> um, okay, so you'll love this. <laughs> Uh, I found a study that those with increased impulsivity have reduced numbers numbers of cannabinoid receptors in their brain. But THC use actually normalizes the impulsive behavioral profile in those test subjects with the impulsivity issue, indicating that the reduced number, number of receptors does not prevent ADHD folks from experiencing the therapeutic benefits of cannabis use. This also explains how when I take five milligrams of THC, I just mellow the fuck out and I'm not totally wrecked, (laughs) but how taking higher doses will definitely fuck me up and turn my legs into beanbag chairs. I actually, I had a conversation with my therapist about this because she was talking about those brain waves and saying that the THC, when you have 
anxiety or ADHD and you have those rapid mm-hmm. brain waves that the THC slows the brain waves so you have a more normal pattern. Yeah. Because there are times where I feel like I can smoke a little bit of pot and then I think to myself like, oh, okay, I can, I, it's like I am slowed down yeah. and I'm at like a more regular like thought process Yeah. and I can think about one thing at a time and only one thing and nothing else but that one thing, but I do great with that thing. <laughs> That one thing I'm that super good at. Yeah. For a few minutes. Because you can focus. <laughs> yeah. Which is, I'm sure, what normal people feel like. <laughs> yeah. If you're uh, neurotypical, good for you. Yeah. Thumbs up. You won as far as genetics go in yeah, that Yeah. What's way. it like to be God's favorite? Yes. <laughs> because all I'm getting from this is <laughs> I have to have a traumatic brain injury or <laughs> there's just a lot of things in my brain that aren't communicating correctly. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember... Oh, you didn't watch Spongebob. I feel like our brains were put in backwards. Like, I feel like that's really what it is. Um, There was an episode of Spongebob where... I don't know if he was trying to remember something or forget something. But what it boiled down to was there was a lot of little tiny versions of himself in his brain. (laughs) Rifling through filing cabinets and, like, burning things. Oh. But that's what I think my brain does every day. My brain is filled with tiny Spongebob's. (laughs) <laughs> opening it and shutting messy filing. The problem is that it's Spongebob's and not you. That's what it <laughs> not is. Tiny it's use. all those Spongebob's Sponge in my head. <laughs> it's knives and Spongebob. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever his fucking laugh is. That was pretty good. Oh, thanks. That was not bad. <laughs> Mr. Crab. It didn't sound like Sean Connery. I was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a new skill, folks. <laughs> Peaky will be so proud. <laughs> gonna be in bed next time he's gonna be like can you do that spongebob <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm kidding i'm not but he's i gonna am gonna make you adopt his dog if he dies that's what that's the penalty like, i'm gonna do patrick's voice and you do spongebob's voice <laughs> okay okay now you be the squirrel <laughs> he's like okay now you're gonna be sandy i'm gonna be squidward <laughs> the next day okay you're plankton and i'm mr krebs <laughs> says relationships get boring after a year <laughs> i'm sorry you haven't brought spongebob into your role playing and mashed potatoes <laughs> oh man get with it yeah i forgot about the mashed potatoes yeah, discussion until you gave me that clip <laughs> it's pretty gross <laughs> <sighs> so anyway <laughs> uh yeah that i said insert pool photo story here oh Lord, that was something. Um, actually, a year ago today. Yep. Evidently, <laughs> we uh, we decided to like get a hotel room with a place with a pool, and you know, grab dinner and do like a girls' weekend. And Katie was asking for more edibles, and I kept saying, "Are you sure?" And she was really confident, which you know. Very on brand for Katie. Yeah. Yep, I'm sure. Well, it's not so much that I was asking Hit me. for more. It was just that we arrived after a four hour yes. saga in the car where like every highway was shut down. It's a lot of accidents. Various accidents. Yeah, road work. And like, <laughs> took us twice as long we to We got get there. off the highway. We're turning into the parking yeah. lot for the thing, and there was a car smashed into the highway supports. Yep. <laughs> So I was like at my limit driving yeah. to this hotel. There's a lot of car accidents. So we get to the room and you were like, what do you want? Like five milligrams or 10 milligrams? And I was like, I'll take 10. Yeah. Like, fuck me up. Yep. And we were going to go down to the pool. And so we were in the pool and the pool was only four feet deep. So like there was no point like where I could really float. float right. Like unless I was just going to like lay on my back. You were just kind like, of no standing in a water. bathtub. Yeah. yeah. Um... <laughs> The sirens are going off around us. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of sirens for all the car accidents, and it also started thundering. Yeah, and there was a little bit of a burning smell at some Oh, point. yeah, that's right. There was smoke. It was a weird, you know what? Uh, it was a weird day. It really was. In retrospect, it was a weird there day. There may have been a minor apocalypse, but... And uh, it didn't matter to us because we were loaded up with edibles, and Katie tried to get out of the pool... <laughs> And was kind of walking like she had, you know, those waders that you wear for fly fishing that go, like, up to your chest. (laughs) So she was walking like she had those on, but they were filled with water. Yes. 
and she couldn't possibly take a step and was insisting that her legs weren't working. I recall very clearly saying, it's a good thing there's a railing on these stairs. There was like three stairs just to... (laughs) She's saying stairs. I'm going to say steps. (laughs) Because it wasn't actually stairs, it was just a few steps. But I got out of the pool to get my phone so that we could take a picture of us in the pool, like a selfie. Yep. But I was trying to set up my phone and, like, prop it up so that the rear camera would be the one that took the picture because it's a better quality camera than Mm -hmm. the front-facing camera. Mm -hmm. And I spent probably 15 minutes. There was a struggle. There was a lot of it falling over and then Katie getting frustrated and then me who was also loaded with edibles trying to help, and then we would start laughing, and then we had just, like, never accomplished what we were going for. But also, the only thing I could think about is, like, how can I manage to set this up so that it was in landscape mode? Yep. But not falling over. And then I was like, okay, I'll just move closer to the pool, the edge of the pool, but then I was, like, sitting on the ground, and I didn't want to slide across the concrete. And then tear and, like, your skin and bathing suit. Yeah, yeah, road rash myself. Yep. And destroy my swimsuit. But then also, I couldn't move. <laughs> I mean, the the pretext to this, which was, like, you know, there's that sweet spot of just enough THC that it slows your brain waves, but not so much that it stops your brain waves. Um, <laughs> we had stopped our brain waves. Yeah, I was wrecked with a capital R. (laughs) There was no troubleshooting what we were trying to do. It was just, it was a lot. And ultimately, we only got to spend about a half hour in the pool. (laughs) It felt like much longer, though. It did feel much longer. You know what? That's true. In our world, it was plenty of time. Yeah. Uh, We had a good time. And the other issue that I had, though, was that I got in the pool and I was like, oh, man, I'm so thirsty. And I couldn't drink the water because it's a pool. I knew that much. Yep. And I wasn't going to drink, I mean, I will pee. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to drink the pool water from a public pool. No. Nope. You know. But, which brings me to my next point. Hey, Garrett, why don't you have a pool? <laughs> <laughs> it's really hot out and a pool would be nice right now, so. <laughs> when is that going to happen? <laughs> I'm going to come over next time. There'll be a fucking kiddie pool. I was, gonna, I was just going to say, I'll get a kiddie pool and put it in the back. <laughs> I would sit in it, too. In this weather? Fuck yeah. I was just thinking that, like, I, yeah, I would probably would still use it. Um, do you have anything? Nope. Oh, I said, who, me? As for me. (laughs) (laughs) I said, this presents in my life as hobby overload, but mastery of nothing. Mm. A chronic boredom, thanks to the hobby overload, Mm. spending sprees, and unable to maintain my organized areas. Mm. Yeah, I did not, it didn't occur to me that my tendency towards impatience could be impulsivity. Because, like, I'm good with, like, long-term, like, I can make long-term decisions, I can, like, play the long game with plenty of things, but you put me in a line for something and you might as well run me over with a car because, (laughs) no. I don't mind, I don't mind waiting if I know the reason for the wait. If there is a wait with no rationale, then I have a problem. I mean, I would like to know the rationale, but I'm only going to be understanding of that for what I feel like is a reasonable amount of time. Like, being stuck in traffic where you're the, like, they're clearly, like, letting one lane go and the other lane go. If you're not doing a give and take, then at, at, like, the busiest time of day on a Friday, then don't. I, I, I hate you. Yeah. So for example, this, I do end up with impatience a lot of times when I'm waiting at Starbucks because there'll be like a certain rhythm of people Mm -hmm. getting their drinks and paying and whatever. And as soon as that rhythm stops and I'm somehow waiting and I can't fathom why, or like today, the car in front of me just like, just needed to pull up like one and a half more feet and they totally had the room to. But, like, until they did that, the back end of my car was hanging out in traffic, which, like, thankfully there was nobody around. But, like, at the same time, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you know I'm here, dumbass. Like that, yeah, that does kill me. Because they turned right into the parking lot while I was turning left. So they saw me. Like, I had my Mm -hmm. signal on. So, like, that drove me nuts. And then the entire time they were just, like, 
not pulling up enough to like yeah. let me get to the order thing. Yes, I want to crawl out of my skin. That yeah. that makes me very angry um very often. <laughs> I so actually something that links this this with the emotional dysregulation. I a crossover story. <laughs> I uh, went to the post office one day. I had to ship something for Poshmark or some, something like that. I had like a pre-done shipping label. So I went into the post office and picked up one of the boxes that they had there and taped it up and like got yeah. everything packaged. And I didn't have my wallet with me because I was dropping it off essentially. I didn't have to pay for right. postage. So I go to mail it. And the lady at the register is like, well, this box is $3. I was like, what do you mean this box is $3? She was like, well, these aren't the free boxes. Those are the free boxes because the priority ones are free. And that stand, oh, and the, the white ones. One. Yeah, I must have oh, grabbed yeah. them from the wrong. Um, which, in my defense, there are no directions when it comes to, no. like, shipping things, I feel like, is the Wild West. And you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah. I've gotten a little bit better with it. But I got really annoyed with the lady at the post office who... She's not the nicest, but we're cool with each other. Um, and oh, I got so this really. This is your regular post office. Yeah. Lady. Yep. And I got <laughs> of a, a long-standing like Fraser relationship with this lady. Yes, kind of. <laughs> um, so I got real annoyed, and I, I had to leave and go get my wallet and come back, and I did that, and I was just real pissy about it. So I actually stopped in the next day because I was like, could definitely feel myself getting like zero to 60 like I was just so frustrated by the fact that like nothing's explained nothing's marked and I'm somehow supposed to know that these boxes that look exactly the same except for a slight color difference I have to pay for but the ones that are five feet away I don't have to pay for is arbitrary yes especially when the label says priority mail yeah like I understand like why they would want that difference, but like, just put a piece of tape over the thing that says express. Like what the fuck you're scanning it. It says priority mail. It goes into the priority mail bin. Yeah. Like it didn't make any sense to me. It still doesn't make sense to me, but like whatever. Yeah. Um, so I actually stopped in a couple of days later. I didn't have anything to mail and I saw her at the register and I was like, I'm sorry. I got so cranky the other day. I was having a bad day and I was very frustrated and she was like, that's fine. And then I left (laughs) and we're fine now. Good for you. Uh, but you're grown. Hey, post office, work on your delivery of messages. You deliver things great. You deliver packages great. I mean, realistically, I feel like the type of box I put something in should have no bearing on what I pay for the postage. Like, yeah. like they still have to put their fucking barcode on it. So, like, if the barcode says, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. stop putting priority mail on the side of the box that you print and you won't have this problem post or, office. Or, God like, forbid... you want to save money, stop wasting that on ink. Just make them plain yeah. and put USPS on them. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, like just nothing stop specific. No priority, no express. Have them all on one thing. Especially if you're offering them for free. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was a nice job of covering impulsivity. Thank you. I got very deep into it. I was very excited when I was researching it. Um, that was me with emotional dysregulation, but um, then I got too embarrassed to tell all of my stories because I hate them so much because I cringe. <laughs> it's my, my yeah, being old the, the study with like the food rewards thing and how like at a certain point, like I'll kibble, just, go, kibble, for the, kibble, yeah, kibble, I'll just go for the instant one because like right. the weight is irrelevant for sure. Me like I would. Yeah. Yeah. I would say my impatience oftentimes is more based on context. If I'm, again, hungry, tired, it's been a long day. Like, if, I, if I'm if i already frustrated, then, yeah, my patience is razor thin. Mm, yeah, that's true. If I'm, like... Otherwise, I'm yeah, I'm pretty good at doing, like, a cost-benefit analysis of, mm-hmm. like, is it better to wait a little while longer? Mm-hmm. Like, even something as simple as, like, my vegetable garden. Like mm-hmm. if I just wait a few more days, these beans will be bigger and I don't right. have to like pick them right now just because they look right. done. <laughs> these are fine and they're like an inch long and <laughs> tiny little shrimpy things. Kate's like, this is fine. They're bite size. Yeah. So <laughs> things like that for like mm-hmm. is such a minute example, but it is that sort of thing where I have to be like, you'll be okay, Katie. <laughs> Come back later and yes. get some more beans. It will still be here. <laughs> I do have to talk myself off the ledge sometimes. 
Um, yeah, there's no, I'm just thinking of other horrifically embarrassing examples of being impulsive and impatient. Um, my favorite example is when I sent PK a screenshot of his and my conversation back to him instead of sending it to you. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot about that. I didn't oh, know that. We had only been dating for like two months. <laughs> yep. Nothing like sending a screenshot to the wrong. Thank God it wasn't anything bad, but it was based. It was like him saying that he hadn't been on, like, because according according to him, we weren't exclusive mm. until September when he asked me to be exclusive. But, uh. um, I was basically asking like, "Are you dating other people? Have you been on, whatever we use Hinge?" Mm-hmm. Um you know, and talking to other people on there. And he was like, no, I haven't spoken to anybody since our first date. And, uh, yeah, I was like super excited. <laughs> so I screenshot it. She's like, and flipping. sent it back to him. And yeah. he was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, <gasps> ocean walk time. I'm going to die. <laughs> yep. 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 Actually just thinking about it makes me like, Ooh. that's a whole ass nightmare sending a screenshot to be fair person. yeah there is a lot that pk puts up with about me <laughs> thanks honey happy birthday remember all these symptoms we've been talking about <laughs> yeah. also it turns out when you're researching adhd symptoms for a podcast and you have people in your life with adhd uh they don't like when you point out the symptoms <laughs> Yeah, I've I've mentioned much to my mom a couple times, like, oh yeah, that came up when I was researching ADHD, and she's like, really? What now? Yeah, it's very yeah. like denial, which yeah, it's not just a river in Egypt. Remember that <laughs> joke? Yes, bringing it back. Thanks. I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> Don't feel like you need to do that. You know what joke I never used to get as a kid? Uh, you know that does your face hurt? Because it's killing me. Never understood it. I just didn't understand the joke. Felt like a dummy. Anyway. (laughs) Go ahead. That's cool. Good job. I mean, that is like me saying I want to run a train on some chicken nuggets and not understanding what that meant. But Mm -hmm. somehow way worse. Yeah. Mine mine was way worse. (laughs) I'm going to agree with that. (laughs) Only because I announced it at work, you know. (laughs) I mean, that's the setting. only thing. It was in a If it weren't for that, everybody would have been on board. Yeah, I mean, I guess you were in elementary school and you didn't understand. Bunch of anything. uptight fogies. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in to another episode. We will be here next Thursday. Uh, we hope you join us. And uh, we'll be discussing... We have... One, two, three, four? Four more I think, ADHD? Yeah, like three or four... Yeah, say. we're not so, 100% sure how it's going to shake out. Um, but we'd love to hear what you think about this. Comment on our Instagram. Yeah, and... some some sweet feedback. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do take the time to respond to every comment that's not from a bot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's if it's DM me for more followers, I'm not interested. Yeah, if With you're telling me money. to promote our our. <laughs> podcast on your page i'm not going to yeah but if you have a real comment i will i do my best to respond to everybody and if your emoji to character count is off i will not respond <laughs> <laughs> i send it back straight to jail <laughs> i send it right back to the kitchen <laughs> um but yeah you can also uh but i i do take the the time to respond so let us know what you think and um what your experiences are with uh, ADHD and impulsivity. We'd love to hear from you. And if you also want to crawl out of your skin, <laughs> feel impatient because that's my baseline. <laughs> the end. The <Outro>. end. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll be here next Thursday with a brand new episode to delight your brain juices. Until then, the best way to support us is to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts and like and subscribe wherever you listen. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Bar's Ankle High. And if you want to help us grow the podcast even more, you can subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash The Bar's Ankle High. Patreons get exclusive Patreon-only episodes, monthly horoscopes written by yours truly, and access to our secret members-only Facebook group, as well as added to our close friends list on Instagram. We have a lot of fun over there, and we would love for you to join us. 
Until next week, remember to be kind to yourself because the bar is ankle high.